How do you determine if you have a factory GT? Well, in 1967, as is the case of the car on the lift over there, it's very easy. That's a factory GT, and I know that for a number of reasons, the easiest of which, it comes with a Marty report. Or you can get a Marty report, and it'll tell you if you have a factory GT or not. Unfortunately, with 65s and 1966s, there are no Marty reports. There's no external confirmation or third-party confirmation you can go to. So you've got to dig deep and examine the DNA of the car. There are external clues, internal clues, clues underneath. If you know where to look and you examine all those clues, you can determine whether you have a factory GT or not. There are like seven clues on the external part of the body. Fairly easy to get your hands around and see quickly on a walk around. There are six clues under the hood. There are four clues, as many as four clues, in the interior. There are four clues underneath the car, and there's one very critical clue in the trunk of the car. So today we have a factory GT in the building. It's gorgeous. It's a 1966 Silver Frost factory GT. When I say factory GT, I mean built by Ford at the factory as a GT. We're going to use this car as our example to prove if you have a factory GT or not. So. Let's get started. Okay, let's start with the easy part. The seven clues that are on the exterior of a Mustang. These are easy. You can just walk around a car and quickly assess whether they're in place or not. First, you have a gas cap with the GT lettering on it. That's how GT Mustangs came. Uh, perhaps even more important is the rear panel cutouts for exhaust tips like you see right there. That's GT only. Non-GTs did not come with those. Okay, well, let's walk around and see what's on the side of the car. Okay, now looking down the side of the body, let's look at some more items on the external part of a Mustang. You've got a stripe running down the side. It's broken up by the individual Mustang letters. That's GT only. And then you've got the GT badge or GT moniker right here above those lettering. And you've got disc brakes that you can see by looking right through here. So that's, let's see, one, two items on the back, three, four, five, six items right here. Now let's walk around and look at my favorite item on the front, which is the seventh item on the external inspection of a Mustang. Okay, the seventh item and my favorite styling cue for the GT is the fog lamp and the fog lamp bar. I absolutely love that. Now from here, let's go under the hood and look at the six items that you look for when you're trying to figure out if you have a factory GT. Okay, we're under the hood and let's look at these six indicators that you have a factory GT. First and foremost, look at your radiator core support. And at this exact location, look for a hole. That hole is for a wiring harness running to your fog lamps. But what's important is rub the back side of that hole with your finger or thumb and you'll feel a lip. And that lip has to be there. And the reason is from the factory, this piece of metal, the radiator core support was punched. The punch process created a lip. If it's been drilled, it won't have a lip. So you have to have a lip on that hole. We do, and that's a, that's a factory GT. Great indicator right there. Okay, right here where the VIN is stamped into the inner fender, you have to have an A or a K in the fifth digit. Uh, those are the higher performance motors. And all GTs were either A or K codes. This is an A code. And we do have a higher performance 289 four barrel motor. So that is uh, also correct. Now, looking straight down at the sway bar, you have a wider diameter sway bar. It's a 13th, about 13 sixteenths of an inch sway bar. And you can measure that with a little paper uh, measuring tape, and that'll tell you that's the wider sway bar, and that's what came on a factory GT. Looking back in the back, we have a larger master cylinder. It's a larger diameter than the non-disc brake car. So this is a disc brake uh, master cylinder. It has a pop-off lid two clips versus a screw-on lid, the smaller diameter non-disc brake car. So we have a factory disc brake car. All GTs were disc brake cars, no exceptions. Looking down at the steering box below, you'll have a tag on there, and all GTs have a very specific code for a manual or power steering, a very unique code because it's a quick ratio steering box that was unique to the GT. So uh, these are your indicators for a factory GT under the hood. Okay, we're looking at the interior now. You can see I've removed the seat. We'll see why in just a minute. But look at your door trim tag. Uh, it should coincide VIN-wise, of course, up there, and you should have an A or a K code 
which in fact we do on this car. So now come around, look inside, and I'm gonna show you what's underneath this seat on a factory GT. Okay, we're inside, we've taken the seat out, and let me show you what's important. Looking at the floor back here, you'll see an additional plate. I'm going around it with my fingers. This, a, this is a plate that's added as support for the GT exhaust hangers, the dual exhaust that came on the GT cars. There's also this little plate right dead center. It's about an inch long by about two inches, inch wide by about two inches long. Two studs going through it because that's where the bolts are on the other side to hold the GT exhaust hanger that holds the dual exhaust and one screw in the middle. This is factory GT. Now there are a limited run of Mustangs that were dual exhaust that weren't GTs, mainly K-code cars that would have this, but otherwise this is GT and GT only. You have to have this if you have a factory GT, no exceptions. Very important, remove the seat, make sure that you've got these reinforcement plates with the smaller plate in the middle, two studs, little screw in the middle, and we're gonna lift the car, we're gonna put the car on the lift so you can see what the other side of this looks like. Okay, now for the remaining interior clues on what makes a factory GT. Of course, the uh, most important item is your fog lamp uh, switch it needs to be in the right place, and it has to be wired properly too, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Another clue is the disc brake pedal. Uh, the GTs came with disc brakes, and the disc brake has a little medallion in the middle that says disc brakes, and this one, of course, has that. So the final clue would be the dash. Now what's important is in 65, standard Mustangs came with the Falcon type straight linear instrument cluster versus the round gauges, unless one of two things. If it's a pony interior car, you automatically got the round gauges. If it's a GT, you automatically got the round gauges. None of the linear dash. Now on a 65, to be sure, 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 you almost have to remove the instrument cluster Make sure that from the factory, that dash is beveled or semi-oval for that speedometer because the Falcon dash cars are not beveled, the metal I'm talking about, and the GT cars and the Pony interior cars are beveled. So a Pony interior car uh, could would have the correct dash, but it's not a GT, could be a GT. The standard interior car in 65 with the correct Oval Dash is a factory GT, that's how they came. Okay, so I mentioned there's more about the fog lamp. So before we put the car up on the lift, we're gonna show you how the factory did the wiring harness or the wiring for the fog lamps. When you hit the fog lamp switch, three things happen. Of course the fog lamps come on, but the running lights, your rear running lights come on and the dash lights come on. That's how the factory wired the fog lamps, lamp system. So we're gonna turn off the lights in the airplane hangar and I'm gonna uh, display that for you. Rear running lights are on, dash lights are on, and front fog lamps are on. That's how it's supposed to work. Now in the trunk is my favorite spot of all to check to see whether you have a factory GT or not because impossible to fake, very important. So open the trunk, pull your mat back, pull the little plug, there's a hole in here, and stick your finger in that hole and push your finger towards the tail light, towards the back of the car. If it immediately runs into a thick metal plate, you got a factory GT. Now that plate is a support, like a U, think of it as a U-shaped bracket, a support bracket for the exhaust hanger that's unique to the dual exhaust cars back here. That plate will not be on a non-GT car, so when you push your finger back towards the back, you're gonna be pushing into thin air. So extremely important, one of the items that can't be faked, along with some of what we'll show you underneath the car, you must check the plug hole in the back of the car. Very important. Okay, we finally made it to the floor or undercarriage section of the car. And the great thing about using this car uh, as a car to identify what makes a factory GT is this car's never been touched underneath, or at least it hadn't been until I put the new exhaust. I actually took off the factory exhaust, the exhaust that was installed on this car 50 years ago. Here are the mufflers. It's very cool. So you can see the, uh, Ford stamped embossed there, a uh, date code, 965. And here's the matching muffler, Ford embossed, 965. Very, very cool. And you can see where we cut the factory GT hanger bracket off and reused it up there and mounting the new replacement exhaust. And of course the car also had its original factory tips. So I have not seen that before. 
in my 30 plus years of playing with old Mustangs, it's a first. So the car is a really good one to use as an example, and so we'll continue looking at the car. All right, so underneath, you'll recall we talked about the reinforcement plates inside the car when you remove the back seat. Very important. And the smaller plate with the two studs going through, and those two studs can be found right up here where the original hanger is, and you can see the studs coming through and the bolts on there and the factory hanger. And uh, the uh, factory hanger, even the lower portion was used when we, when we remounted this modern exhaust. So we have the entire factory system still intact for the dual exhaust that came on this car. And you'll also notice this is another very important item. The brake line is moved farther to the left and higher up into the axle housing arch to clear the exhaust so it wouldn't get too hot. And that's on a dual exhaust car only. You won't see that on a single exhaust car. So uh, very good indicators when you have a dual exhaust car that you've got a factory GT. Now moving over here, when you look at the rear frame that's coming all the way to the back of the car, we talked about going into the trunk and poking your finger in and then pushing your finger towards the tail lights and feeling that brace. You can do that from underneath as well. Poke your finger through the hole, push it towards the rear, and you'll immediately impact a brace. And that's that U-shaped brace that's in there to prevent somebody from crushing down on this rear frame when tightening up these hangers, when they were installing the dual exhaust hangers. So these dual, exa dual exhaust hangers, you can tell by the pictures, are the factory hangers. They've never been off the car. The bolts and nuts have never been off the car. And it's almost impossible at this location to fake this because you can't get a drill up in here and drill for the bolts that have to go through to support the factory hanger. In fact, it can't be done unless a car is disassembled so far that it's no longer a car. So uh, that's a good place to look and that's a real good indicator that you're dealing with a factory dual exhaust car, which helps support that you've got a factory GT. Well, I hope that was helpful. We walked all around the car. We looked under the hood, we looked inside the car, we looked in the trunk, and we just finished checking the undercarriage. I hope that helped you to understand what makes a factory GT. We don't have the final answer and all that, but I hope this was helpful. That was uh, our intention. I hope you liked it. If you like it, click like, uh, share, write a comment, uh, or subscribe. We'd love to uh, share more information with you in the future about Mustangs. We love these cars, and we know you love them too. Thanks. Come back.